Left. Left. I, I'm starting the event. Yes. Okay. Uh, let, let me send the Mustafa desktop to the event. Mustafa, maybe you should manage the things. Uh, I'm not very familiar with the team settings still. Of course. Now uh, I am. I think every, everything is working now. Uh, maybe I can stop with a Turkish greeting and then yes. hand over to Marco. Uh, okay. Herkese merhabalar. Ee, öncelikle herkes hoş geldi. Ee, Meetup serimize bildiğiniz gibi e, oldukça önemli konuklarla devam ediyoruz. Ee, özellikle önümüzdeki 4-5 hafta içerisinde gerçekten çok kıymetli Power BI açısından, e, Power Platform açısından e, dünyada e, sayılı isimlerden kişileri ağırlayacağız. E, bunların ilki de Marco Russo olacak. E, kendisi Microsoft'un MVP'si ve e, aynı zamanda da ee, analiz Service konusunda e, oldukça e, uzman birisi ve SQL BI e, isimli platformunda kurucularından. E, bugünkü konumuz Power Platform, e, pardon, e, Power BI'da e, Mentimeni ilişkiler e, olacak. Bunu derinlemesine bir şekilde konuşuyor olacağız. E, yine community e, liderimiz e, ya da kurucularımızdan Halil de e, bizimle. O da belki kısa bir girizgah yapar. Sonrasında da sözü bırakabiliriz. Okay, her, herkese selam, herkese hoş geldi. Ee, Mustafa bahsetti. Marco, it's our great, great pleasure and privilege to to have you with us as a guest speaker. Uh, this is our first time with you. Hope we will see you again in the near future with the different topics. Uh, today we will try to demystify one of the scariest things in Power BI which is many to many relationships and also maybe bi-directional uh, relationships. Uh, I'm handing over the webinar to you, Marco. It's your yes. time. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Marco Russo. So here is my screen. Uh, can you see it? Uh, I, I don't see the return at the moment. Uh, can you confirm that you see my screen or should I do something? Thank, oh, I have to share. Yeah, yeah. Again, yes, share again. Okay, okay. I'm starting now. So, desktop. Okay, should be live now. Yes. Now. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. It's working? Perfect. Okay. Yes. So, my name is Marco Russo. Um, today, we, we're going to talk about uh, many to many relationships, uh, and uh, my primary goal is to explain what are the differences between uh, different types of many-to-many -many relationships in Power BI. You will discover why I'm saying that uh, in a moment. And uh, based on some feedback I received, I will also hi highlight a couple of uh, features of the relationships, uh, like the bidirectional filters that could be uh, not clear to everyone. I received a few questions in advance, and so I will try to address uh, these questions during my presentation, even though we have time at the end uh, to also get other questions. Uh, I work at SQL BI. We produce content for uh, business intelligence with Microsoft technologies, in particular Power BI, but also analysis services and uh, Power Pivot for Excel. We are mainly focused on just data modeling DAX uh, and analysis services, of course. So we have a lot of uh, free content on our website, and you can also find uh, uh, video courses and uh, books. So. The slides and the demo that uh, I'm going to present are also available at the link that you see in the slide and also with a QR code. So in the meantime, you can download this uh, content. It's just a couple of Power BI files uh, and the slides in PDF format. The agenda for today is uh, relatively simple. We start uh, discussing uh, what are the many-to-many -many relationships between dimensions uh, in the data modeling world, which is not Power BI. And then we will discuss about uh, what could be the meaning of many-to-many -many relationships in Power BI, where the same name has been used uh, for a particular type of relationship, uh, which in reality is something we use uh, to connect uh, tables with uh, different granularities. And I will discuss in detail uh, why uh, these are different and uh, 
what are the use cases for each of one because it's not that one is better than others they are totally different and totally they serve totally different purposes and my goal today is to explain what are these differences and uh, when you should use either one or the other so let's start with uh, what is uh, the definition of many to many relationship uh, not in power bi but in the data modeling world uh, for uh, business intelligence for uh, uh, data models for business analytics uh, when i talk about this word i'm talking about uh, the kimball methodology which is uh, a way to define data marts which are relational databases uh, which are designed uh, for uh, reporting and not for uh, you know creating an erp system or a transactional system so the main purpose of these databases uh, is to just create reports and uh, the Kimball methodology is famous for uh, the definition of the star schema where you have one or more fact tables connected to tables that are called dimensions and uh, i'm not going to describe these uh, you know how these uh, definition works i'm just saying when we when we reference the definition of the many to many relationship usually in this world we um, reference uh, the many to many relationship between dimension tables which are tables that describe uh, in a qualitative way attributes uh, describing events uh, for example product customer are dimensions for a fact table containing sales so products and customers are containers of attributes that describe a transaction, a sale transaction. But uh, so the dimension is a table that contains attributes that describe something, but usually doesn't contain measures. So this is the main uh, difference. So many to many relationships in the Kimball world are relationships that connect from a logical point of view, two dimensions saying, uh, okay, between these two entities, there is a many-to-many -many relationship, and I will show you this in a moment. Then we have in Power BI uh, different uh, type of different types of relationship that are referring to the cardinality of the relationship, which is, uh, you know, on each end of the relationship, do you have a single value for a you know, for a value of the column, or you might have multiple rows with the same value of that column, which means that you can define a relationship that by default is one to many or many to one. Then you could have a one to one relationship or many to many relationship, which have been introduced in October 2018, so less than two years ago. But as we will see, these many to many relationships are just a way to connect. Uh, tables uh, at different granularities and they don't replace don't replace the concept of the many to many relationship we discussed at the beginning so for this reason at a certain point i will introduce uh, a different uh, description of uh, these so I, I will try to differentiate them saying uh, many to many cardinality relationships when i talk about power bi relationships and i will continue to say many to many relationship when i talk about the generic relationship Okay, uh, I think I hear that someone has uh, the microphone open. So if you can close the microphone so I don't have the return of the, the noises. Okay, thanks. Okay, so this is uh, the, the, initial, uh, the initial introduction. So we have, we start uh, with uh, the many to many relationships in the, you know, dimensional world, the first uh, item that you see in the slide, and then we will move to the specific relationship types we have in Power BI. So this is the structure we have. So first, what do we mean when we say, oh, we have a many-to-many -many relationship between dimensions? And remember, when you go outside of the Power BI world, when you say many-to-many -many relationship, you mean what I'm going to describe now, not what we see in Power BI, which is a different thing. So the idea is that we have two dimensions and we have a relationship between these two dimensions. And for example, imagine that you have transactions in a bank account. And a bank account is usually just a number that contains, you know, that groups transactions like deposit and withdrawals. 
withdrawals that you have over the, the account. So if you sum all the operations, you get uh, the balance of the account. Now, one account uh, usually has one owner, the customer who owns the accounts, but uh, it is possible uh, to create an account that is owned at the same time by more than one person. Uh, for example, uh, husband and wife can share an account uh, into the same bank, which doesn't mean that if you have uh, 1,000 euros or dollars, they can both withdraw withdraw uh, $1,000. Because as soon as someone gets the money, the other person that has access to the account cannot. So it's like a shared account uh, where everyone can have access to the entire amount of the money in the account, uh, but we cannot establish a percentage of ownership of the account. We cannot say it's 50-50, because if, if it was 50-50, I could have allowed to get only half of the money in the account, which is not true. I can get all, in, in, you know, all the money. There are other types of many-to-many -many relationships where we introduce the concept of uh, ownership, which means, for example, I have 50% uh, of company, another one, another person has 20%, another person 30%. So in that case, there is an allocation. But usually, when we reference many-to-many -many relationships, uh, we don't uh, say we have a, a, a percentage of the ownership, because in that case, it's just a way to partition an amount. And if we have that case, we could solve the problem in a different way, okay? So let's focus uh, for this discussion about the problem of the uh, bank accounts and uh, account holders. So how do, imagine we, we have this situation, we have a bank, we have a bank where we have transactions, there is a table with the transactions, every transaction has an account. And we know that each account can have one or more owners of the account. Let's call them customers. Okay, so on one side we have a list of customers. On the other side we have the list of the accounts. Now the accounts uh, is just a list of numbers and the list of the customers is just a list of the customer. Now with these two tables I'm not able to, to say who are the customer that owns a certain account. I don't know. I know that one customer can have multiple accounts. I know that one account can have one or more customers. But in order to define this relationship, I need additional data. I need a third table that has all the existing combinations between customer and account. So as you see from this slide, uh, the accounts number one, two, three, four have only one customer. But the account number five has two customers. Right, let me highlight this. Here, Mark and Paul are the two owners of the account number five. And the account number six is owned by Marco and, uh, sorry, Mark and Paul again, but in reality in the, in the demo we will see Marco and Robert. But, so, but the idea is that I need a table here uh, that describes the existing relationships between customer and account. So from a very high level point of view, I'm saying between customer and account, I have a many-to-many -many relationship because one customer can have many accounts, one account can have many customers. As you see, Marco has three customers, the account five has two customers. So Marco has three accounts, I wanted to say, whereas uh, the account five has two customers. So it's a many-to-many -many relationship from a very high level point of view. However, when you define this model in a relational database, you need not two, but three tables. And the table in the middle comes from the data source. The table in the middle has important information to define this relationship. Without the table in the middle, we cannot say who is the owner of one account or what are the accounts of each customer. Because this information is stored in the table in the middle. Now, once we have these three tables, uh, we can create uh, the physical relationships between these tables uh, by using simple one-to-many relationships. You see that customer has a relationship that is a one-to-many relationship between, so there is a one-to-many relationship between customer and accounts customers, 
And there is another one-to-many relationship between account and accounts customers. Okay, so these are these are the physical relationships we have. And uh, once we create the model, so this is what we can do in SQL Server, Access, Oracle, for example. Once we move these tables into Power BI, what happens? Actually, we have the same structure. You see that we have the same structure. I, we just added here the table with the transactions. For each account, we have a list of the transactions. But as you see, these are the relationship, one to many, one to many, one to many here. And uh, please note that uh, the direction of each relationship is the single direction relationship. OK, so far so good. Now I have, so this is just a slide, but I can show you the actual model that has this data. And I can show you this here, where you see that we have the actual uh, customer table, accounts table, transactions table, and accounts customers table. As you see, the accounts customers table is hidden to the user. There is no reasons, there are no reasons to show this table to the user. And this table in the Kimbo methodology is also called a bridge table. It's a table that acts as a bridge between accounts and customers, okay? Why we want to do that? So if I create a report, and let me go here. So if I create a report, let me remove uh, the customer here. The report you see here has just the account name and the sum of the amount. What is this sum of amount? Well, the sum of amount is just a, a simple column that sums uh, the account column uh, where we, sorry, the, the transactions, uh, sorry, I made a mistake. <laughs> The sum of amount is a measure that is just a simple sum of transactions amount. Okay, so we sum the amount of the transaction of all the transactions, positive and negative, made in uh, every account or only in the account that is filtered here in the report. So we say that Luke at, at this at this moment, Luke has five hundred dollar, Mark has five hundred dollar, Mark Paul five hundred dollar. Now these names that you see here are names that we used to provide to each account the name of the account. Let me go back to the slide. In the slides, I said we have one, two, three, four, five, six. But if I use these numbers, the report is unreadable. So in the account name, we replaced the number you see here with just a string that describes the list of the, of the customers of the account. But actually, this, this is just a string that we cannot use to do any calculation. It's just a way to group the data in a way that is readable to us. So when we see uh, Mark Paul, we simply say, okay, th this is the account number five uh, that we replaced. Uh, instead of five, we wrote uh, Mark Paul. So we know that this is the account owned by Mark and Paul together. Okay. Now, the total of uh, all the accounts is 8,000, and this 8,000 is actually the sum of all these numbers. If I look at the model, I have at this point account, uh, the account name in the rows of the matrix, uh, and the sum of amount uh, in the other column of the matrix. So for each account, I see the sum of the transactions for that account, and I'm grouping by using the account using this relationship that uh, propagates the filter between account and transactions. Okay, so account filters transactions. So far, so good. Now, what happens if I remove the account and I use here the customer name? Now you see that I have a list of customers, but I always have 8,000. What is happening? If you remember, we have in our customer table, we have only four rows, Duke, Mark, Paul, and Robert. And uh, the problem is, if, if I go to the model, I have this column now in the report, and when I have a filter over this table, the filter propagates following the direction of the relationship and filters the accounts customers table. So far, so good. But we, remember, this is just a bridge table that we created just to, to, to be able to establish who, what are the accounts owned by a customer. So once I filter this table, this table actually would be filtered only for the accounts of the customer selected. So 
for Mark, there are three accounts. Uh, for uh, Luke, there is only one account and so on. But as you see, the number I see always shows the sum of all the accounts. Why this is happening? Well, basically because the propagation of the filter in Power BI um, stops here because the direction of the propagation by default propagates a filter from the one side of the relationship to the many side, not the other way around. However, I could say, well, but if I, what I want to do, I want to filter all the accounts owned by the selected customer. So if I filter Marco, I want to see three accounts. If I filter Luke, one account, just the account of Luke or Marco. And I can obtain that by just changing the filter progression of this relationship. Let me go back to the slide one second, because this is the situation we have. The filter propagation by default filters account customers, but uh, we would like to filter the accounts that are filtered for the current customer, the currently selected customer, but this is not happening because uh, this is not the direction that is allowed by default. However, in Power BI, we have one option. We can change the cross filter direction of a relationship. So if I set both, now, this uh, relationship works uh, in two ways. When I click OK, you see that now there are two arrows, which means that if there is a filter on the accounts table, in the account column of the accounts table, then this filter propagates to accounts customers. But if there is a filter over accounts customers, only the accounts uh, that are filtered in the accounts customer are also visible in the accounts table because the filter propagates from the many side to the one side of the relationship. This is because of the bidirectional filter. So the bidirectional filter is, the, the, the relationship is still a one-to-many relationship between accounts and accounts customers. But by enabling the bidirectional filter, what we are doing at a very high level, we are saying when I filter one customer or more customers, I want to filter the accounts owned by that customer and not the other way around. So what we're doing is a single direction filter between customers and accounts. It's at a very high level, what we're doing is this. Let me draw this. We're doing this, okay? Very high level, we're doing this, a single direction, single direction between customers and accounts. But from a physical point of view, we obtain this relationship through two one to many and many to one relationships, one of them is bidirectional. Okay? Remember, bidirectional filters, for reasons that would be too long to discuss now, could introduce ambiguity in the model and could create performance issues. But not in this case, because in this case, uh, at a very high level, I'm filtering, uh, uh, I'm propagating the filter from customers to accounts and not the other way around. So as, so, as long as I don't add other relationships to this accounts customers table, this is uh, a safe way to define a bidirectional field. Now, because I made this, when I go back to the report, you see that now every customer has a different value and I can discover exactly why we had this number by including also the accounts here. And uh, if I drill down at this level, you see that uh, Luke has only one account, Mark has three accounts, Paul has two accounts and Robert has two accounts as well. But then the numbers are correct. Now, if you go back to this list, you should notice another important concept. When I had a list of accounts, the total was just the sum of the accounts. But now that I show the customers, I cannot sum the amount of the customers, or better, I could, but the number that I would obtain is bigger than this one. In each calculation, I evaluate every account only once. However, what is happening now is that the same account, Mark Paul, is here and here. And the same for Mark Robert, it is here and here. What does it mean? If you sum one, two, three, four numbers, the amount you would obtain is around 9,000 or 10,000, four, seven, uh, six, seven, uh, eight, uh, nine thousand. Okay, the sum of these uh, four lines is five. It is nine thousand. 
why I see the total 8,000? Because in every cell, every account is only evaluated once, not multiple times. So even though at the detail level, you can see the same account multiple times, at the total or at any aggregated level, the number is, every account is counted only once. Which means, I mean, this is correct, but uh, you have to realize that every time you introduce a bidirectional filter, you introduce what we call a non-additive measure. So sum of amount is additive if you consider accounts because it's a simple one-to-many relationship. But when you consider the customers, you cannot sum two customers, sum in the sum of amount of two customers because you might have the same account multiple times. So internally, the calculation Pay attention to this detail and provide the right numbers. Uh, sometimes it is counterintuitive, but actually if you are in the bank business, you know exactly what is going on. And the same could happen and will happen every time you introduce a, a bidirectional filter. But now, I don't want to discuss about bidirectional filters. I want just to say, remember what we have at a very high level is a many-to-many -many relationship between customers and accounts. Uh, and in this model, in this report, we want customers filtering uh, accounts and not the other way around. So accounts don't filter customers, but customers have to filter accounts. Now, I enable the bidirectional filter in the model, but you can also enable a bidirectional filter in DAX by using, uh, so this is what I, I made, I changed the, the, the bidirectional filter at the data model level. But you can also enable the bidirectional filter over an existing relationship in DAX. So you can create a measure that enables a bidirectional filter just for the duration of a calculation. This is safer when you have a more complex models because enabling the cross filter direction, enabling the bidirectional filter in a relationship could be dangerous in, in certain conditions. So what we have seen so far is the classical many-to-many -many relationship implementing this relationship, this kind of relationship, doesn't require any feature. This was possible five years ago. In the first version of Power BI, you were able to do the same uh, model and report I made now. We didn't use any new feature, okay? So now we are going to look at another data modeling problem, which requires another technique to be solved. And Sometimes this technique could leverage another feature of Power BI. So let's introduce the problem of defining relationships at different granularities. I have a model here where I have sales and budget. So we have a table sales here. Wait one second, I have to find the other point. Okay, we have sales here, we have budget here. Now, the sales table is a table that has a granularity by day, product, and customer. So granularity means uh, at which level of detail we have the data, we have the sales. And uh, the maximum detail is a single customer that buys a single product in a single day. This is the, the level of detail we have. And we call this level of detail granularity. When you define a relationship, for example, we have customer related to sales. The one-to-many relationship requires on the one side a column that is unique in the table, which means that the column that is used here for the relationship customer key, on the many side, you can have multiple rows with the same customer. But on the one side, for each value of customer key, you need a single row in the entire table. So the customer key column must be unique in the table. You can have only one row for each customer, no more than one row for each customer. So we call this a constraint. A one-to-many relationship defines a constraint on the one side of the relationship, which is not a problem because in this case, we actually have a, a table with the customers, a table with the products, a table with the dates, and we use the relationship connected to a column here with the same granularity of the corresponding table. So far, so good. But then we receive the budget, and the budget has been de defined at a different granularity. We don't have a budget for every product and for every customer. 
we have a budget that says all the customers in Turkey, all the customers in Italy for this brand, and the brand is a group of products, has this budget. So we have a budget amount or we have a prediction that has a different granularity. Usually is an aggregation of customers, an aggregation of products, and maybe an aggregation of time too. In this case, we have the budget for an entire year. We don't have the relationship, but you can imagine that we could have a relationship to the year. Now, if you think at a very high level, right? At a very high level, we actually have a logical relationship between customer and budget because the country region attribute in the customer table is in, in a way connected to the budget table. So when we create a report by country, we could filter the budget for that country. And the same could be done for the product brand. So if we create a, a report where we aggregate the sales and budget by country and brand, we could compare something that is comparable because we work at the same granularity. So in a way, we can say that there is a logical relationship between customer and budget at the country level. And a country is a group of customers. The same, we can say the same for product and budget. We can say there is a logical relationship between product and budget at the brand level, which is a group of products. But using the classical one-to-many relationships, we cannot establish this because none of the two sides of the, re, of, the, of, the, of the relationship has a column that is unique. We have multiple customers in the same country in this table for, and multiple products for the same brand in this table. So we cannot establish a simple one-to-many relationship to do this. So what happens if we import this data in Power BI? Well, I obtain this. Let me show you the model first. So the model is identical to what we have seen into the slide. We have a, we just have product here, customer here, and the budget here. So if I create a report here, where I have by for every brand, we just use the brand, but the, the problem would be identical for 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 the country. For each product brand, we have the amount of sales, and so far so good. But for the budget, we always have the same number. Now, what does it mean? Well, if I filter a single brand here, filtering a brand filters sales because we have a relationship here. But uh, I would like to filter the budget for the same brand that I selected in the report. Now, a relationship in Power BI is just a way to propagate the filter. But uh, when I don't have a relationship, I have other techniques that I can use. Uh, for example, I could create a measure here that uh, transfers the filter from the product table to the budget table at the brand granularity. How can I do that? i show you. So here, my, my measure here is just uh, the, 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 the um, sorry, not sales budget here. The column budget here is just a column budget that uh, is the sum, is the aggregation of a column. So I don't have a DAX measure here. So now I create a DAX measure because I have to manipulate the filter context in some way. So I just increase the size of the font here so it is more readable. And I call this measure of budget. And I do a, a calculate of what? I want to sum the budget the column of the budget table but I want to make sure that the budget brand is within the selection of the budget in my report. And I can retrieve that from the filter context using budget brand. So my first uh, attempt to solve this problem, which is not the ideal one, okay, this is not the best practice. I'm just showing you that by using DAX, I can create a measure that actually transfers the filter from the, um, sorry, not budget brand, product brand, the transfer the filter from the product brand to the budget brand. How? Well, actually I create a condition that says I want the budget brand, I want to filter budget brand so that it is within the values that are in the product brand column. 
So if I'm filtering one brand in the product table, I want to filter all the rows in the budget table for the same brand. So if I create this measure and I move this measure in the report, you will see that uh, this measure actually provides, uh, let me just uh, fix uh, the decimal points. Uh, here we go. So now that I made this uh, code index, I see that uh, this is working. This is working because I'm filtering only the budget rows for every brand. And at the grand total, I have the grand total. So if I try to use the, um, the simple sum of the column budget, it was not filtered by the product brand. But by doing this, what, by doing what I did now, it works. So this works, but it's not ideal. As I said, this way I'm using DAX, but uh, I have two problems. The one problem is that this is the slower way to solve the problem. Uh, the performance is bad. We have alternatives to this. So instead of writing the code this way, we could have wrote uh, the following. I just show you another syntax that uh, produces the same result. Uh, is slightly faster, but still uh, not as fast as a physical relationship. A physical relationship would be much better. Why this? Because uh, the internal engine uh, doesn't uh, optimize the internal query. Technically, the, 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 the resolution of the code I wrote now doesn't uh, leverage uh, the storage engine very much. It uh, uses mainly the formula engine and uh, the performance is not ideal. So do I have other alternatives to this? Well, if you think about the problem, uh, we can try to solve this problem in a way that is similar to what we did uh, for the many-to-many -many relationship uh, uh, that we have seen in a previous example. But think about this, we don't have a many-to-many -many relationship here in the classical sense. What we have is that when I filter a brand here, I want to filter all the rows of the budget here in a single direction. So I want to product, I want that product filters budget using the brand cardinality. So what I want to do is like a one-to-many relationship, but actually I don't have a one side of the relationship because my product table might have multiple uh, rows, multiple products for the same brand. Now, with this in mind, actually I have uh, um, a solution that can uh, leverage the data model by creating an additional table. But this time the table does not come from my data source, does not come from uh, you know, my relational database. It's a, just a list of brands. So if I create a table that has a list of brands, I could put this table with the brands here and I can create two one-to-many relationships between brands and product and brands and budget. And now I have a model with the relationships. So let me do that. So if I create a, here a new table and I call this table brands, So let's uh, try the simple way. I could just write a product uh, brand here. Okay, this thing product brand that shows me the list of the unique brands uh, of the product table. And uh, now that I have this table, I can put this table here and I can create uh, two relationships here and it just works. Now, at this point, uh, you can imagine that uh, what I can do is that if I use, uh, so if I go back to the report, uh, nothing changed, it's still the same. But now if I replace the brand here with the brand from the brands table, now you see that my budget column, which is not a DAX measure, is just uh, the sum of the column, it is working and it produces the same result we have here. Okay, so technically this system works, uh, but uh, there are two problems at this point. First problem, what if I have a um, brand in the budget that doesn't exist in the product? The way I created this table will only show brands that exist in the product table. And by the way, this is what you obtain all the times so also with a one to many relationship. But in case I have a budget for new brands, uh, they will not be displayed. 
However, this solution is the only solution that allows me to show also the brands that are in the budget. And I can obtain that by doing this, uh, by doing this. So if I write distinct union of distinct, uh, and now I include both the distinct of the product brand and the distinct of the budget brand. So what I'm doing now, I'm getting the, the list of the brands from the product table, the list of the brands from the budget table, I merge them in a single list and then I remove the duplicated values. When I do that, actually I get the same table, but if I had the brands that exist only in the budget, this, this list will be longer and this list will be visible here. Okay, it's not the case now, but just I'm just saying this is an, another possibility. This was one problem. The second problem is that from a usability point of view, now we have a, a brand here in the budget, a brand here in the brands, and a brand here in the product. So it's very confusing. So usually we suggested to hide the, the budget from, uh, sorry, the column, in this, col in this case, the, the brand column from the budget table. But we should hide the brand column from the product table. We should uh, enforce the user of this report to always the brand column from the brand's table. But if we do that, my customer would be disappointed. They would say, why, Marco, we have uh, part of the attributes of the product in other tables is not useful. I mean, it's not, it's not easy to understand. We prefer to have all the attributes of the products in a single table. So I would like to keep the user experience of providing the brand column in the product table and not in another table. And I would like to hide this table to the user. So I don't want to show a brand's table, but now I am back to the initial issue. I still show here the budget with a, with a strange number. But now if I go back to the model, you can see that what I want to do when I filter the brand here, I would like to filter the brands here and these brands should filter the budget. I can achieve this goal by just enabling this relationship as a bidirectional relationship as a bidirectional filter. So at this point, uh, I have this behavior. If I filter a product brand, the product brand filters the brands uh, and the brand table filters the budget. So now if I go back to my report, you see that now this column is working and this column doesn't need any DAX code. It just works. I don't have to write any DAX code to do that. But more important, this code is much faster, it is one to two orders of magnitude faster than the DAX version. I'm saying is 100, 100 times faster. OK, it's not peanuts, it's, it's, it's a lot. And of course, you could do the same for customer and budget. Now I can, I can skip this part, I will show you in the slide. But uh, what I would like to highlight this at this point is that uh, if you think about what we did, in reality, what we did is that we have a model where product filters budget. So we have a relationship between product and budget, but this relationship, which is a single direction relationship because product filters budget and budget doesn't filter product. This single direction relationship is not a one to many relationship because we don't have a one side here that we can connect. The brand that we used is not a unique column in the product table. But we obtained the effect of this high level logical relationship by using two physical relationships, many to one, one to many, connected to an intermediate table that this time we obtained from the data that we already had. The bridge table, which is not actually a bridge table, but the table brands we have now is a table that I built with the data that I already had in my model. I don't need to import data, additional data from the data source because this additional table is just an um, artifact to obtain uh, um, you know, a structure of two relationships that actually generates a very high level relationship that is still a single direction relationship. So I'm using a bidirectional filter here. I'm using a single direction filter here. I'm using an intermediate table here, but the result of these three objects is a single relationship that connects products to budget 
at the brand table. We call this relationship a relationship at a different granularity because we don't create a connection at the granularity of the product table, but at an aggregated granularity. And uh, now that we understand this, uh, and I will, uh, I will recap the differences between the two models we have seen, because the, the model we have seen before was uh, similar in shape, but very different in, in certain details. Now I can introduce uh, a feature we have in Power BI. So instead of creating this technique, and we could create the same technique here between customer and budget, okay? So if I create, an, imagine that I have an additional table here and the same many one, one many relationships between customer and budget. But instead of doing this, I can simply drag and drop country to region, and I create this many to many cardinality relationship. Okay, what is this relationship? Let's do this here. If I remove this, okay, if I remove this, and I connect brand to brand, what I get as a result is a single relationship that connects products to budget using the brand column. Brand, brand. So for this reason, it's called a cardinality many to many because none of the two endpoints is unique in the table. But the important thing is that by default, the suggestion that you get as a cross filter direction is wrong. Never use the bidirectional filter here. Because what we want to do, we want a product that filters budget, not the other way around. Because if we enable the, the bidirectional filter here, we will not be able to do the same for a customer. So if I do this, if I make this choice, if I say product filters budget with cardinality many to many, what I get is a single relationship that, as you see, filters budget, gets the filter from product, transfer the filter to budget, but here we have many because brand is uh, not unique in the product table. And we can do the same for the country region. Okay. So if I do this, I have now a model that still works exactly like the model where I created the, the two relationships with an intermediate table is identical from a functional point of view. There are no differences, okay? However, there are no differences from a, um, from a result point of view. So the result is the same. We say we have the semantic, the same semantic of the two relationships. But I will discuss in a moment about the performance because this performance could be counterintuitive. And I will talk about this in a moment. Now, um, one important thing is not because I have the, because you see, I don't have a bidirectional filter here. It's a single direction. When I do the physical implementation using two relationships, one of the two relationships is bidirectional. But from a very high level point of view, this is a single direction filter. However, because internally it has a bidirectional filter, many to one and so on, we have non-additive values for the measure that we have here or for the budget column. Why? Because think about what happens if I include here another attribute like the color. And I drill down and I show you the color of Contoso. What happens? We have sales and we have the color for each sale because we know for each transaction in the sale table what was the original product and the color. But for the budget, we don't have a description of the color. So if we go to the color level, we always see the same value for the brand. Now, if you look at the report this way, you can figure out what is going on. You say, oh no, we don't have the budget at the color level. It makes sense. But the real issue is that if I remove the brand from the report and I look at the color, I have a number for the budget. The numbers are different here, but these numbers are probably meaningless. Why I see this number here? This is the number that is the sum of all the brands that have at least one product that is blue. Because only one brand or two brands have a color Azure you see that the budget for Azure is, is, is smaller, but many 
many colors exist in almost all the brands. And so the numbers are always very high. So once again, when you have a relationship like this one, a many-to-many -many cardinality relationship that connects two tables at a different level of granularity, you introduce a non-additive behavior of the measure every time you filter by a column that is below the granularity of the relationship. And the Power BI doesn't warn you about this happening. You just get to the larger number. You, don't, you, you have to figure out whether you want to display this number or not. And so this is the reason why in these conditions, I suggest you to not use something like this, like the column with the automatic sum. I suggest you to use a measure like the one I wrote here, because in this measure, I could write some code that by analyzing, so here now I can remove this, okay? I can just write the sum and, and this measure works because of the relationships, but you see the number is still the same. But uh, I know that these numbers should be hidden because remember, these numbers make sense if I show the brand. These numbers don't make much sense when we look at the details color by color. So what I should do or could do is write in some conditional statement that hides this measure if it is not compatible with the granularity. So we should write something here. And if, if the conditions are correct, then we show this, otherwise we don't show anything. Um, we have, uh, if you look at uh, our website, we, we have an article about the budget to write this uh, code if you are interested too, but because uh, our goal today is just to discuss about the relationship, I'm not gonna uh, too much in detail about uh, how to implement this technique. So we have time to complete the discussion of uh, the topic for today. So going back to the slide one second, because we had a missing relationship, initially we had a budget that was a very high number. Uh, we had to solve this problem and we have different techniques to solve this problem. The first technique was we can use uh, DAX. Okay, we can write the, the DAX code to transfer the filter. And uh, it would work, but uh, there are different techniques. We can use three tests, we can use in values. Uh, it works, but it's not ideal from a performance point of view. We have seen that we can uh, create uh, the relationships, the classical one-to-many relationships, creating these uh, tables in the middle that are originated by the data that we already have. So we don't have to import any additional data. We can just create two calculated tables to do that. And uh, once we implement, uh, so this is the code that we use to create these tables. And once we implement the bidirectional filter, we automate the propagation of the filter from product to budget, but not the other way around. So at a very high level, it is product that is filtering budget and not budget that is filtering product. So it's a one single direction relationship. But now we simplify the model by introducing the many to many cardinality relationship. If you see, I'm not saying the many-to-many -many relationships. I always say many-to-many -many cardinality relationship because I don't want to confuse this relationship with the other many-to-many -many that we have seen at the beginning. Now, I told you that I wanted to say what is faster, this technique or this technique. And uh, I know that if I ask you, you probably will say this technique is faster. The reality is that this technique is uh, the same up to around 1000 uh, unique values uh, for the column that you have in this relationship. So in this case, we have up to 1000 brands. Uh, you will never see a difference in performance. But if you start having 10,000 brands uh, or 10,000 countries, so if the column that uh, defines this relationship has uh, thousands of unique values or more, then uh, this uh, solution is uh, one order of magnitude faster. Okay, because technically the solution internally creates internal indexes that are not created, that are not generated uh, by this solution. Maybe this could change in the future. Okay, so I'm not saying that this, is, this will be true forever, but uh, the thing is that uh, the quickest solution is this one. 
but uh, this solution is justified when the size of the table that you create here has uh, thousands of rows. If you just have a uh, 20, 30, 100 countries, you can certainly use this technique. It's easier, faster to create, uh, and it doesn't have uh, much effects on the performance. So you will see the same performance. Now, if we think about what we did now, we had a list of products, and we had the budget that was defined at a different cardinality, a different granularity. So what we did, we created a table in the middle that had the list of the unique brands. And this time, we created the two one-to-many relationships. But if you look at the way that we propagate the filter from product to budget, we traverse a many-to-one and then a one-to-many relationship. And the other important thing is that this brands table does not come from the data source. It's just uh, an information that I can obtain by, by querying the existing tables. It's just a list of the unique values we have in the brand uh, in the product table. So what are the differences between the different uh, approaches that we have seen? Actually, the first uh, definition we have seen today is a classical many-to-many -many relationship between dimensions. We have two dimensions, like customers and accounts, and we define with an additional table that must be obtained from the data source. We define the existing relationships between the entities in these two tables. So we need a third table that contains the relationships between customers and accounts. And we implemented from a physical point of view, the relationship between customer and account is a relationship that is uh, traversing uh, two relationships in the order one to many, many to one. The second approach is what we used to connect two tables that uh, will not be possible to join using a standard one to many relationship because the relationship was not defined at the granularity of one of the two tables. In this case, because the product has a granularity of one row for every product, if the budget is defined at the brand level, which is a group of products, we are not able to create a one-to-many relationship. However, we can create a relationship at a different granularity. So using a group of products, like the brand's columns, by using an intermediate table with a list of the unique brands, transforming my high-level relationship in a set of two physical relationships. The table in the middle is obtained by querying the existing data. Not, I don't need to get additional data. But uh, this time, if you look at the sequence that connects product to budget, you see that the sequence is many to one, one to many. So at a very high level, we can create what is called a weak relationship in Power BI because it's a weak relationship because it doesn't generate a blank row in the product table if you have a budget, if you have a brand in the budget that doesn't exist in the product. If you remember, the only technique that showed me all the brands, including those that exist only in budget, was the brands table created by using both the lists from the product and the budget. But when you use the weak relationship, when you connect with a single relationship in Power BI, what you get is just the list of the brands that exist in the product. And if you have brands that exist only in the budget, you will hide them. You will not, they will not be visible. You will not see a blank product row that includes all the rows in the budget without a valid budget, even though the total will still include all of them, but you will not see the detail. So remember, one to many, many one, one many, many one is the classical many to many relationship between dimensions. Many one, one many is a relationship that works at different granularity. Okay, so this is the physical implementation of two high level relationships that we could create, could call many to many relationships, but actually I try to, you know, distinguish by saying, in this case, many-to-many -many relationship between dimensions or relationship at a different granularity using a many-to-many -many cardinality relationship, which is a different thing. Um, 
So remember, the filter should be always a single filter. At a very high level, even though you use the weak relationship, is a single direction filter. Don't use the bidirectional filter. Okay. When I use this, I'm using a bidirectional here and a single direction here. And this was a similar to what we did for the uh, accounts and, uh, and customers tables. So conclusions, and then I'm open to your questions. Uh, we have different type of many-to-many -many relationships, uh, and uh, these relationships can always be implemented using the classical uh, one-to-many and many-to-one relationships. Uh, but uh, in, if I connect the two tables at a high level with a sequence of one, many, many, one, then the bridge table gets data from the data source. When I use many one one many, then the bridge table is probably just a normalized attribute that I can obtain by the data that I already have. In both cases, pay attention to the measures because the measures are no longer additive measures. You have to pay attention to the you know, correctness of the data. When you look at the total, when you look at the details, uh, you might want to do particular calculation. And this doesn't depend on the technique you use, it just depends on the on the data model you have. Questions? Do we have questions? We don't have questions yet. Yep. I think people are either mesmerized <laughs> or totally enlightened with the information. Any questions from the audience? Uh, personally, I like that <laughs> last examples very much. That, uh, that, that they were brilliant. I think many people, including me, would like yep. to watch the recordings nice. many times. It's quite tough to understand. It's, it, it, at least it is not very easy thing to understand. We yeah, I mean, you have to, it. you can play with the data. I mean, it's uh, we could talk for hours and uh, you can play with the examples uh, and uh, we also have articles, uh, books, uh, you know, many things. But uh, yeah, the important thing I would say just uh, because you can create uh, uh, something in Power BI doesn't mean you have to use it all the time. So, so uh, I think that uh, it's too easy sometimes to create uh, um, um, many-to-many -many relationship, uh, cardinality relationship uh, by mistake. Because mm -hmm. uh, you see that if you if you connect it, you know, you, you connect it to two tables, many times people don't want to do that, right? Imagine this, imagine this. If I connect uh, here, let me sh show you this. So if I do this, uh, so if I get uh, the wrong column here connected to the wrong column here, okay? Uh, okay, no, not in this case. I, I made. A, I wanted to do to select another column. So let's use, for example, uh, I need. Okay, the unit cost uh, with a price. Okay. So if I do this, uh, you see that I have to pay attention to what I'm doing, but uh, nothing stops me to create this uh, relationship by mistake. Right, because uh, I should have paid attention to the numbers that were present there. I didn't, so now I get my, my relationship. I, I can actually force the activation here, but the problem is that uh, I'm doing a completely you know, wrong uh, relationship. What I asked to Microsoft is that uh, the visualization of this many, many is too light. Uh, I think that a different color or a different visualization uh, should uh, make this relationship more evident because I have seen creating this these uh, relationships by mistake, by total mistake. Uh, people were not realizing that the, the, the column was not unique on this side uh, and this would create also numbers that uh, don't match in the report. That's the biggest issue. Imagine that you have two rows with the same product key, for example. You don't want this to happen, but if you get this, you could get the wrong numbers again. So it's very dangerous. Well, people are thanking you, but we have one question asking, yep. is it possible to use that many-to-many -many relationship with uh, analysis services as well or not? In uh, If you have analysis services 2019 or Azure analysis services, yes. 
uh, we are talking about this relationship, okay? So this relationship can be used in Analysis Services 2019, uh, yes, or in Azure Analysis Services. But again, if you don't have this relationship, we have seen uh, it's very easy to obtain uh, the same result, and it is actually faster. So <laughs> it's not really a limitation in my opinion. It's, okay, if you have this uh, feature and you have a small column, that's fine, you can use it. But I will not say I had to upgrade because I don't have this feature, for example. I mean, it's not a reason to upgrade from my point of view. Okay, so you're, you're recommending to use uh, the other technique instead of no, using... No, 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 no. I'm, okay. I'm saying that uh, if I have uh, this feature and the mm -hmm. column and connecting is small, has a small number of nucleus, uh, why not? I mean, it's it's faster to create the model, but uh, there are no penalties in using the other technique. And actually the other technique is faster if the column is, is, is large. So I will not justify an upgrade mm -hmm. just because I have to lose a two minutes to create a, an additional relationship. That's my, my point of view. Of course, if I have this feature, I use it, but only when the conditions allow me to do that. And uh, as soon as I have a more, uh, you know, a bigger model, and usually when you have analysis services, you have bigger models, so probably you, you don't use it. Okay, and other questions? Don't be shy. None. Marco, it, is, uh, it, it, it was really a big privilege for us to have you with us. Uh, Thank you. So it was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for your time, for the invaluable information you shared with us. Thank you very much. Great, great, great pleasure. If if there is no further questions, I'm stopping the recordings. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Marco. Take care. Thank of you very yourself. much. Have a good day. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much, Marco. Have Thank a good you. day. Thank you, Mustafa. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh,